this is a foot pedal. And with the foot pedal on the floor, as I kick in, it's going to kick the drop up. I will select the drop from the screen. Now, in non-automatic, I have to step on the drop every time. Now, I can switch from non-automatic to automatic, either on the screen or by convenience on the table. And as I press that button, now I do not need to press on that pedal anymore. The drop comes back by itself. The advantages of that is basically you can use a repetitive drop without effort. Okay, you can trigger any drop from the screen. So we have two options for the drop. First, we have to select the drop. We can put it in non-automatic and in automatic. So let's start with the automatic section. So I put the drop very light, and if I click on the pelvis, you will see the automatic drop on the pelvis started. To turn it off, that's it. If I select the thoracic, it will do the same thing. If I select the cervical, it will do the same thing. Now, obviously, if I put tension on the drop, as I'm going to show you, and to put tension, I'm going to turn the button clockwise. Then the drop, I can use them as manual here and you're going to see how it works. I select manual and now I'm going to raise the pelvic drop. So, once it's manual, I'm going to use the foot command to raise the drop, the pelvic drop. If I select on the screen the thoracic drop, it will be exactly the same thing, and I just need to click to bring it up. Now, there is another function, which is very practical, is that green button here. If I press on the green button, suddenly, the drop, which were manual, become automatic. And I do not need to use the foot function. If I click back, I take off the automatic, and I need to use the foot function. The purpose of that is basically to use a high rate of drop for certain condition, and we will see that later on. So the drop can be monitored from three areas. The screen, the foot, and the green button to switch between automatic and manual. There are different type of drops. We have the toggle recoil drop, like in the cervical, and we have what we call the sustained drop, like a pelvic drop. The trusts are different. In the toggle recoil, the truss does not reach the down section of the drop and stops before the arms recoil. So you go down, you don't go at the bottom, you recoil before. In a sustained drop, you go all the way down, you do not recoil. Those are the main difference between the toggle recoil and the sustained drop the different type of drop and their equipment. So you have on the market what we call an axial drop, which is basically the most basic. You have an axe on the cephalad port, and basically the drop turn around that axe for a few angles, and it works this way. The problem with the extra axial drop, depending how the head of the patient is placed on the headpiece, the resistance will change. So it's really hard to set up, it's much harder. Then you have the plate drop, and plate drop do not work on an ax, like 
we have on that table. It's a plate that raises up and goes down. And that's the most accurate drop because pretty much it doesn't change if the table, the patient's head goes up or down. And we're going to see how it works. So you see the plate drop, the whole piece raised up. No, you don't have an ax here. And you can see it, the whole piece raised up and goes down. So that's typical of a plate drop. And then you have a plate drop like here with a cephalide translation and some plate drop can straight down. So how do you evaluate the quality of a drop? That's important when you get a table because the, if you don't have a good quality of the drop, you may not be able to do what you want. So here we're going to go for the thoracic and I'm going to raise the top. And a good drop, you will basically, let's release a bit of the tension here. You will use the same pressure in the middle, in the side, on the other side, and for the same pressure, the drop will go down. And you can test that by using the same weight and dropping a different part of the table and the drop should go down. That's an excellent drop that has been fairly well tested. So the anterior sliding of the cervical piece that I just showed you is supposed to facilitate the separation, the distraction between two articular facets. And remember, on the upper cervical, what we used the toggle recall the most, it's where you have the most intimate relationship between two articular surfaces. So that anterior translation that we see on the cervical drop, as the headpiece drops down, you have a little separation that happen in the same time. So the toggle recall drop addresses mostly the upper cervical or light anatomical piece like the foot if you want to treat an extremity on the drop. The toggle does not work well on big anatomical piece such as the lumbar. Doesn't work very well. The sustained drop, which is the lumbar drop, work much better on big piece. And the most common is for the pelvis. Here I go. So how does, what is the mechanism between the two gold record? The mechanism is a vibration. It's a kind of sinusoidal wave that happen at the facet interspace and that frees an adhesion that's located at that label, at that label. As an analogy, of this mechanism, you can, if you try to open a jaw and the jaw is well locked and you, you have a jaw of pickle, for example, and you have to force extremely hard to open it up, you could force and use a lot of strength or you could be smarter and turn the jaw and tap it on the counter. And after you tap it, you can open it with ease. And what it did, that tapping, creating a vibration at the entire space of the jaw itself and the lid, created basically the possibility for you to open the jaw by breaking the adhesion. So that's a little bit how a cervical drop. The mechanism behind a sustained drop, how does it work? Usually an anatomical piece is a little higher than the other. And you give a momentum to that piece, basically, and you create a shearing between two pieces. That's pretty much how the sustained drop works. So to test if the drop is identical in its tension on the right side, on the left side, on the middle, we just took a weight here and we just just that drug kicks fine here, fine here, fine here. And we basically establish the sensitivity of the drop with a mechanism as such. So that drop, you can press any place on the cephalad 
part of that pelvic piece and have the same type of NCNCC for the drop. One of the characteristics of the drop, which is noticeable and it's, it's very valid to mention it, it's the fact that the drop is not jerky. You have an increased acceleration as the table cocks up. And that's important because if you have an acute patient, if there is a brisk sudden increase of the drop, it will hurt the patient. So this drop has been engineered to go up slower in such a way that you can treat an acute patient. And let's observe it together. So I'm, we're going to go down and observe as he goes back up. And that has been done on purpose for acute patient. And I have to say it works very well. One of the advantage of the automatic drop, it allows a faster tuning of the drop. Traditionally, it's a knob that you turn under the pelvic section to set the weight of the patient in relation to the drop. But most doctors do not take the time to do that so because it takes time. So basically, they take their contact and they use their leg to assist the drop in dropping with basically avoid them to tune the drop. So it's much more approximative. Now, with this type of table, if we go on automatic, see what it does. So by just turning the knob half a turn or a full turn, you stop the mechanism and the patient's weight is tuned exactly to the table much faster, much more efficient, and much more comfortable for the patient because you have just the right type of resistance. And I go.